of the new Beast Handler Tier 5 Towers. It's been very interesting recently, sadly the top I've got enough. I've decided that I'm going to do a tier list, because the last time someone did a tier list, that was a long time ago, a lot of nerfs and buffs has happened since then, so let's just get into it. So the Flying Fortress, I think, it's been buffed quite a lot, it's price has gone down, it's really good now. I'm going to put it in the amazing tier, I'm not going to put a super tier just yet, because it's still quite expensive and not very viable in gamers like chimps. Blue Mist Alchemist, F or E tier. Um, it's not that good of a tower to be honest. It's like, it's good in concept, but it loses you a ton of money. If it gave you like extra cash gain, like the whole bottom path alchemist is about cash gain, but the thing is, the blue master alchemist doesn't make you any extra money. It loses you, which I don't think is very good. Okay, this. F, even worse than I think, uh, blue master alchemist. Not viable on gyms. Pretty much a few more Kaiser classes are just better than that. If you want, if you're looking for one blitz, just get a few more. Just get recursive clusters, more recursive clusters. We'll probably don't now because they've been nerfed so much. But just get another tower. No, that's a lot of damage. Mob domination. It isn't F tier level, but it isn't the greatest either. So I'll put it in D tier because it's good. I'm not back. It's been buffed quite a lot, so it's just a generally good tower now. But its price is still quite a lot, even though they took it down 10k from its original price. So I might put it up to D to... To... Hmm... Think. Yeah, wait, oh, I need to do some changes here. Garbage. Um, what do you know? They claim... That nothing... Gets past their bow. Now that means they're bad if they claim that nothing gets past their bow. Okay. <laughs> and everything else can just be everything else. We do not care. Trade Empire. It's a good tower. Compared, quite, compared with Much Man. They have been nerfed since the last show. So, and they're not compatible in gyms. But I'm going to shove it in High Amazing because you can make a ton of money and on water Blunaria stuff that is where you can get the most things ever crossbow master um high c or low b actually it has been buffed quite a lot and uh, if you've been if you about zero i know about one person probably <laughs> watched all my videos so if you saw my crossbow master video you just see you were able to beat round 88 and i was literally testing every round up until AGA, so and they were able to beat it. So it is quite a good tower considering how cheap it is. So a great middle game option, not good on late game. It's not good late game. Avatar of Wrath, bosses, super, general, do I need to explain? This is what this is the tower I used to do Dark Castle chimps. I use Dark I use Avatar of Wrath. It's an amazing tower, boss, bosses, it can do well against that. Uh, except for Vortex, because, you know, but it's generally just a super tower. I mean, you can use it for Vortex still, but Blunarius and Lich is a defo go-to. Just Pirates and Poplars, and if you're going for Chimps, go with Open 2, and it's just amazing. And it's quite affordable, too. Triple XXL Trap. Hmm. It's like... If you're just doing like a jokey and popable run, I guess it could be good. Because you don't really want to send chimps, because when you do buy it, it makes you a lot of money. So pop it and see it. Um, because it's a good tower, it can literally instant absorb the RNGs. There's a bit RNG based, because I was doing ouch in pop not ouch in workshop in popable, I remember. And I did, did some testing in sandbox, I was like, oh it can do round 98 sand. You can do pretty much do round 9 tiers and support, like more presses and more blip and a few extra towers. So I was like, okay, sure. I got that in the real game, but the thing is, sometimes it like delays how long the chat spawns rather than spawning really fast, so I died. Oh, I spent so much monkey money on that attempt. Monkey Wall Street. I do want to just put banana farms at top. A. It's a banana. It's. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to fill up the super though. 
I'll move it down if I have to, so. But it's generally a super tower. <laughs> it's, uh, so it can generate a lot of money. Generates 4k at the end of the round. No, right? And it buffs boats because that's just what Central Market does. It can pick up bananas. So like, if you have an extra banana central, it'll pick up the banana. Very good. And I just like the fact that it makes a lot of money and it can certainly, it's a monkey farmer, affordable monkey farmer if you want to spend your monkey money. Super glue. I'll probably shove it and see there too. Most of the time, you never need to go past my glue. You can just buy my glue, a 013 my glue, and you're fine. Unless you're trying out a new strategy, which I get we do want to do, then use it. But most of the time, just stick to my glue and buy something else. Comanche Commander. D do. I could do I pretty much never use it ever since they took away that you can't buff the mini planes. It's good, but uh, it's not the best. Ice Core Impale. Oh, okay, I guess we're doing Blue Incineration then. Blue Incineration, I'd say... E2. I like it, but you can just stick at Shattering Shells if you need to defortify. Or just get something else to decamo, like a, a submergence of your... But, it's not the best. Ice Core Impale. Well, I'm just... I'll shove it ahead of the super glue, but and ahead of the extra triple XL trap, but it's good. Slowing down DDTs, mob, BAPs, etc. Yeah, there are other things you can do, but I like how it can just slow down a lot. And it does good damage too, unlike super glue, just stuns it and doesn't really do too much damage. Okay, Master Bomber. I used it didn't it like be good at battles too or something? I didn't really play battles too. Um fifty likes and I'll play battle twos. Battles battles too. Actually no. Fifty likes is too much. Five likes and I'll play battles too. <laughs> no way I'm getting fifty likes in this video. Okay. That uh Master Bobber. I'll shove it in B tier. I wish I had it in C tier, but it's gonna it's getting a bit filled. <laughs> I know I'm gonna fill C tier up so hard. Um, okay. Ah, no, I'm showing you C tier. Okay, so C tier because I've beaten out Magic Monkeys only with Master Bomber. Like, actually, now it's got Master Ninja. Um, oops. So Master Bomber is a good help because pair it with a couple of Shinobi tactics and it can easily destroy. Trust me, like, you just place it down and it just let it do its work and it will it will destroy all the mobs just, and most of the time the Shinobi tactic should be fine with the Shinobi, so you might need a bit more. So, Elite Defender. I used to use this tower all the time, but I don't use it so much anymore, but I'll show it in the high beta, above the crossbow mass. Oh no, with the crossbow mass, but they're equal. It's a really good tower. Especially for like people starting out, you can just buy the Elite Defender, it'll do your mid game. And the semi and and it's got good like the full auto rifle is a good work up to it. Though the thing is with if you go middle path it can't pop lead balloons, that's the problem. I know, so you just need to get something else that can deal with like DDs and stuff. And you go top path, you need to get like a submerging support for decamoing. And there's no shrapnel shot. Perma spike. It's been nerfed, not to say, 523 million times, 469,000 times, 420 times. Like, I swear to god, this tower's not been nerfed more, but yet, can still solo infinite DDTs. Like, I, I, I've, I used it, that was my other tower in my Dark Tank of Shims, and... It was amazing, it can just handle everything. Like, I remember I was doing cornfields without removing any corn, but I'm a spike. Where's the bumpersite? Yeah. Um, it used to be, I'd just place bumpersite down, I'd win. I'd just get some cows to slow down the balloons, or just pop most of the balloons, but spike will just handle. It's such a good tower, even now with all the nerfs, it's a good tower. Because you can just get an 025 and just get a uh, stronger stimulant, or not stronger stimulant, a set of message, and you'll be completely fine. Legend of the Night. If you can afford him, yes, 
you need him for the vengeful shoes on gold. So I guess it's kind of a necessity. But you're never gonna afford him a chimps game. You're never gonna afford him generally. Yeah, there's just no no sometimes there's not a need for it. And the portal's still good. Tax zone. Do I need to know, do I need to explain this? It's, it's an amazing tower. Primary mentoring it, out buff it, get an embrittlement, ill solo. It helps so much so much in middle game, helps so much in late game. It works really well with buffs. Like, I'm not joking, it's one of the best towers ever. Wait, let me just pop it like here. Like, it's like always used for like tier one or tier two blue areas. It just carries. Monkeyopolis. I'll put it seed here. It used to be the meta, like, I used to always use it, but they, it got nerfed really hard. So it's now worse than getting banana farm, so you, it's only use... I'm gonna put it in D tier, actually. D tier. Okay, I'll put it. It's only use is for... Um, if you need to clear a space, but if there isn't a space for, like, a small map or something, that's its use. Prince, Prince pod. Prince darkness. I like... I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna move this update here and just keep that. So, Prince of Darkness. It's a really good DDT handler. It can solo like all of mid game. Actually, I'm gonna put Prince of Darkness in here. I'm gonna just do some quick mix around. That's what I think. Okay, Prince of Darkness is an to tower. It can solo middle game really well. It can help handle DDTs really well. And it can decamo, and it can buff necromancers, and it can, um, what's it called? You can choose where to spawn it. That's a good thing. And it's not really, it's not really like a special type of balloon to worry, because the zombie balloons can pop up It's just like bigger balloons where you can get different towers for, or long rounds like 97. Star Bomber. D tier. The ability smeared. Just don't get it. Like, it's good for stunning, but that's about it. Okay, total transformation. Total transformation. Transforming tonic is a good tower. Total transformation, not so much. I'll put that in need here. Mob eliminator, uh, um, that is a D tier worthy tower because it does a lot of damage, but it's too expensive and it doesn't really help that much for the BAD. Like, not BAD with smaller balloons. If you want to pop a BAD, just get a first strike. That'll do the job a bit better. There's not really much where you could use it for. I guess you could use it for group rounds if you need to pop down the mobs. But that's about it. And it's also good for bomb shooter pam. Okay. So now onto the sub commander. So the sub commander is quite a good tower, but I wouldn't put it as an amazing tower. So I'll put it in the B tip. Submander is generally good overall, you can work it quite well into some strategies and it is yeah you can do chimps with it but it's not the but it's quite a repetitive strategy and it doesn't work on maps that don't have a lot of water. But other than that it's quite a good tower. Uh pump charge. I'm going to put Palmer Charge. Well, Palmer Charge is a good tower. I like to use it, but... And it's just a generally a good overall tower. If you go bottom path, it'll pop birds and do double damage. So just pair it up with a Camo Village and it can do DDTs fine. It's a lot of damage. It just, it's just a good damage scene tower and good, like, support and all good. And, and it's just, like, the general mid mid-range tower can just do about everything. Not the best, but not the worst either. So if I'm going to put that a bit further down. Also, I should have said this before, but it's uh, Marble Eliminator also good for Lich, especially on tier 1 Pirate Lord, it's an E tier because, well, actually I'll put it in D tier. I'll put it in E tier. 
because that's the worst thing. They buffed it so it does quite a lot of damage now, but it can be each one like single lane maps and apart from the bow paragon and it's that's like damage, there's not really much of a use for Pirate Lord, it'd be better to just get like a monkey pirate. It's not that good. Pass my monkey fan club. I'm going to put it in I'm gonna just move the bomb shoots up to C tier and put the Pass Monkey Fan Club in D tier. The Pass Monkey Fan Club, it's a good tower, especially but if you put because all you need to do is pair it up with 20 dark monkeys and it will was it 10 now I put on but and it will do a lot of damage but when it's off cooldown and its ability is not being used it's useless and it's expensive okay spirit of the forest so for the spirit of the forest I'm going to put it in either it's good for races but it's not useful for bosses, it's not useful for the normal game, it's not useful for chimps, it's just... It's good in doing group damage, which is useful for races, but it's not really that useful in general. And there's just much better towers, uh, so I don't recommend you use it. Ultra Boost. I'll put it in the A tier, because... You can make a lot of money when ultra boosting banana farm. If you ultra boost the true sun gold or a vengeful true sun gold, it can be very good as well. And yeah. And especially the overclock's also good, so if you can't and you can't afford that. But ultra boost generally overall, it's just a great tower and you can get great use about of it. Monkey Nomics. Many things will get past its bow. It's about the same price as Banana Central, but Banana Central is just so much better in all the ways. Except, I guess if you don't want to... You still have to collect from it, that's the thing. If, if you're just going... Just go for Banks, or go for a Banana Central, or a Monkey Wall Street. No, that's a lot of damage! On the topic of Banana Farms, I'll put the Banana Central up in A tier as well. Or Super tier. Because Banana Central, it's worth its price, it can make a lot of money, and it works well with BRFs as well. Blue Storm. I'll put this in the B tier. Because it's very useful against bosses. Very useful against balloons, but um it's billet but you can always but the better options are always super brittle and couple mild. So basically if you only get this if you're in a low boy budget, get a two five zero. Otherwise you shouldn't really get it against bosses or like BADs. So yeah, it's a good towel against bosses. Uh, um, Marine, whatever the score. If I can't remember its name, it's most likely not good towel. Uh, I'll put that in E tier because it's not that good. Like, actually, it is quite good. It's been better now, so I'll put it in D tier. So it's Marine. It has most of the cooldown, but working up to it, downdraft's good, you should just tend to stop at that and get another tower. Support unit isn't really that good, you shouldn't really get it unless you're moving your tower. And then the means for damage. So, the problem about the helicopter is that, I know it's just these so just tier 5s, but going along the path you go from camera detection, for like your flying fortress, well you shouldn't be by your OG5, but, or your sky shredder. And then you get um, Downdraft, which is for support. It's Report Chinook, which is support or money making. And you got then you got the Marine, which is for damage. But then Door Gunner is also good, which is why I'm, in, I'm not putting any E here. Uh, absolute Zero. The chance of this YouTube video getting any views. Um, <laughs> it's good for platforms, but not that much else. Especially on like things like Spice Island, it can be incredibly useful. And yeah, so uh, pop and all. The ability is incredibly long, and it just doesn't do that much damage. Well, it does damage, but it's not good against BADs, and it's 
without its ability, it's quite bad. Just don't use it. Grand Saboteur. Let's put it in the E tier, because it's not awful, because its ability could do a ton of damage, and, but apart from that, it's not really much use for it. But, so yeah, in the late game, its ability is really useful, so I'll put it in C tier, actually. Because it does do a lot of damage, and I think it should be C tier. So, uh, Elite Sniper. Um, I'm going to pop it in C tier too, because it's good, uh, because it's good especially if you're going for like everything, it's good for giving your equipment more, more damage, and it's quite a good tower by itself, And e so even if you're not using it for money making, then it can still do quite a lot of damage, and actually personally I think it's better than the glue storm, so I'll put the glue storm back, and put that up into B tier. Copper spikes. I'm sorry, I love the tower. It's just spike storms are so much better. Like with the amount of, with one copper spikes, you can buy so many spike storms, and that's just always a better option. But I still like copper spikes. I still find it's a fun tower, and if you can use it, I say sure, go why not. Preemptive strike. I will put it high B tier. Cause working out to it, first strike, incredible. Preemptive strike is not as incredible. So first strike could be S tier, but um, preemptive I'll put P tier because it's like the first strike. Its ability does a lot, especially to BADs and fortified BADs, and it's preemptive will do a really good job of handling round 95, do a lot of damage to all balloon, and pretty. So the one problem is fortified DDTs, which it cannot instantly take out. So you need something else to clear that up. But apart from that, it's a, it's a good tower, it does a lot of damage, and I think it's high beater. Okay! Anti-balloon. Um, I'll put it in the C tier. Because it can do a good amount of damage, well it's not good, a lot of damage. It's just really expensive, not really affordable in change run. Unless you're I ISAB, whatever the, yeah, ISAB, and... Um, can do it with Quincy to use our chimps. It does a lot of damage by it and will pretty much just handle the balloons for you. Balloons not a problem. But the price cost is mainly what holds it back most of its ability, but it's designed to be that expensive because it's a Super Monkey Tier 5. They're designed to be really strong but really expensive. Super Mesdraum. I'll put it high eater. It's good for clearing out clumps of balloons, but personally if you need to, I don't think you need to get a Super Mouthstorm, but it is quite good against like more abs, DDTs, or like a lot of group balloons. But I personally don't really like it that much. But I do like it, but I don't think it's that amazing as a tower. I think some towers are just better than a Super Mouthstorm. Okay, Homeland Defense. I'm gonna put Homeland Defense as a an A tier. Because, like the Ultra Boost, it's really good at giving all the towers a lot more damage. <laughs> so, its use has been kind of hindered due to the Paragons, but apart from that, I think you should get it if you're going for like tier 5 Lich, or even if you're not being Lich, if you're going free play, always buy this. It'll make your towers do so much more damage, and it is so good. Uh, WLP. So, the Sky Shredder. The Sky Shredder, I think... High A tier. Or the highest of the A tier. Because... It's um, really good for chimps. Really good. Uh, okay against bosses. Good in free play. And it's not that expensive either. But it just generally makes it all around A tier. Though, it has been nerfed sometimes. It is... A very very good tower and very very good at handling with balloons. Also, don't worry, I'll be doing Beast Handler too at the end. But I'm, might I won't do the heroes. Perma Brew. <laughs> because 
it's very good but most of the iron pretty much never get perma brew to its price and it's pretty much just a permanent stronger stimulant which I can just get multiple of those and be fine for like 20,000 compared to 64,000 um, and it is good if you're going late game but personally I do not recommend it most of the time there are a few scenarios where I do recommend it but it's a really good tower um, but it's just the price cost <laughs> apart from that it's an amazing it would be an amazing book with the price cost I'll put it to Peter uh, balloon crash I'm gonna plop it in C tier or D tier actually because Yes, it's good at stunning, but if you really need to, I think you could just get an ice cool impel or a super glue, and they do the same job. And it does barely any damage to. Like, have you seen? If you just buy have green pressure on its own, do you see how long it takes to pop a zero and do? It, yeah, that long. Glaive Lord. Really good against balloons. Okay against Moabs. Got no boss strength. You have to. Can't really. It's not good at multi lane tracks as well, so that's its weakness. And I think it's a D tier tower worthy. And it's just not the best tower to get with that in that price range. Carrier flagship. Um, carry a flagship, um, should, I'll pop it in C tier because it's a good tower, you need it for the boat paragon, the platforms can be useful if you have a ton of money, and, I've, I think I've used it in gyms before, so it's a good tower, and I generally like it, because it can do a decent amount of damage, and it also buffs all water and air towers. Um, Ultra Juggernaut, good balloon damage, but not really good past early and early middle game, and that's worrying for a tier 5. And also we now have a new tier reserved for the Dark Monkey, not the tier 5 Ultra Juggernaut, but the 0, zero Dark Monkey. So can you please place the Drew God of all balloons? Thank you very much, and now let's continue on with the steer list. Superstorm. Not many people know this, but the Superstorm can pop camo balloons without camo detection because that. And I used that once to stop a challenge on Chain Fire when I used to play that. Um, it's an okay tower. When I say okay, I mean it's really good, it's just expensive, and it does nothing against BADs and bosses. So yeah, get it if you need to, but otherwise you shouldn't really. Wait, I'll actually put this in D tier. If you disagree with me, comment them down below, and I probably won't care. Actually, I probably will care. I'll probably cry if someone says, like, your video bad, all of it's wrong. Um, Century Champion. It's an amazing tower. Oh wait, auto. There is one contester with a dart monkey. The palmer spike should also be dart monkey level. Um, can you please move the dart monkey along? <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, and century champion. It's a good tower. Great tower actually, especially when buffed. Like a max bus Sentry Champion can make it to round 200, that is uh, overpowered. Sentry Champion is just a good pa good thing. And I think the one buff it needs is to have its name changed back to Sentry Paragon. Which we all miss. We all miss the Sentry Paragon. But it's a good overall tower, good damage, good DDTs, good everything pretty much. Balloon Silver. Good against the Remix, good against mobs, but it clashes with the but every glue clashes with another glue bath, so 
you can't really do that if you're going for like a mauve blue. And I personally just don't like it because it can't really handle much above a BFB. Apache Prime. I'll put it in high BT because I did I've done like three chimps maps with Apache Prime. Actually I'll put it A tier because many people use it for two tower chimps, many people use it just for chimps in general. It's a really good tower. And especially with the Apache Dart ship, being able to work up to it, because Apache Dart ship can do the middle game and Apache Prime can do the late game. The so problem is it can't pop leads. And it, you need something to get the camera detection and lead detection. Because I don't suppose you'll be going 420 or 520. You'll be going 502. Super brittle. Like I said earlier, it is basically just a better glue storm. So I'll pop it up and beat here. Does very, very useful against bosses. Especially compared with the attack zone. It can make an amazing combo. So I'll pop in Nader. Compare it with attack zone and it's a very good tower. <laughs> like it can solo attack zone, it'll do a ton of damage. It'll basically 4 access to damage and yeah, giving plus 4 damage is very very useful and very very good. And that's it. Uh, the biggest one. I'll put in C tier. Um, because I like... I, it's, it can stun now, that's a new addition they added which is a good addition. And it does a lot of damage and it's good in maps like Moon Landing. So the best out of the bomb shooters, not bomb shooters. The best out of the mortar monkeys. And it's quite a good tower. The, the price is a bit of a backlash. Um Grandmaster Ninja. I'll put that next to the Grand Saboteur. Because the Grandmaster Ninja actually. If used correctly, the Grandmaster Ninja is like one of the best towers you've ever, you've ever seen. I was an outright, I cleared out the middle, I got Grandmaster Ninja and I got a lot of snoopy chat sticks next to it. And it soloed everything, not gonna lie. Everything. It is a very good tower and when you buff it, it works really well with buffs. Like, if, like, Balloon Jitsu with Alchemist buffed is very very good mid game, so imagine a Grandmaster Ninja. With the buffs you can buy in late game. A very good tower. Where's Master Bomber? Oh, there he is. I thought I could make a line with the ninjas. Okay. Super Mines. I, one of my. Two of my most viewed videos are about Super Mines. <laughs> okay, maybe I won't put it there just because. Like, some of the only popular videos I actually have are because of Super Mines. I will put the super mines in C tier. Actually, no. C tier or B tier? C tier. When you buy it, it slaps. <laughs> you can't buy it in chimps, so you can only buy it in 3 play or bosses or other etc. Or like if you find really hard. It can solo, it pairs well with buffed really well. Can't really use it on multi lane tracks, but on single lane tracks, it can just. It can go very far. Check out my my super mines videos that I've made uh, for more information on them, or just check out someone else's, just to see how good of a tower it is. Cripple Moab. I'll put that along with the super brittle. It's been the uh, it's been nerfed, but it's good. It's like it's basically like the super brittle, but it's a full map range. <laughs> But it can only hit one balloon at a time compared to Super Brittle, it can just hit whatever. So the same as the Super Brittle, but it can only hit one balloon at a time and it's a bit more expensive. So if you're doing something like Vortex, I recommend you get that into the Cripple Mob over the Super Brittle. Energizer. Best. The Energizer is best used unsubmerged because then it has advanced intel over the whole map so it can see pop all the balloons. Totally, but it's good in giving ability cooldowns and hero XP, and it can actually do a solid amount of damage when submerged. 
Uh, please don't answer the merger. I mean, you can, but the police will be after you. From submerging. Inferno ring. I'll plop it in C tier because it is a good tower, but it's not B tier or A tier level. The meteor ring's good, and especially if you pair it with more pierce, it can have a more pierce meteor, which is really good as well. And it's just overall very, very, very good. But well, just overall a good tower, and I enjoy using it. And problem is purple balloons will just run through. So if you have something for purple balloons, like a series of dark monkey, well, that probably won't be enough, but something, then you should be fine. And you also need some camera detection for its well DDTs, but apart from that, it will do a very, very good job. Primary expertise. I remember the days when you could pair up primary expertise with a mud mauler or a cluster bomb and they were solo ouch chimps because that's how good they were so I'll shovel it up in high B tier because when paired with a primary monkeys it is incredibly good it can solo chimps or just mud maulers and cluster bombs but actually that's just a cluster bomb and mud maulers so penis so yeah, I'll keep it high beta for now, but very good tower. True Sun God. I'll pop it in C tier, alright? I'll pop it in C tier because, yes, it's the strongest tower in the game, but as well as the incredibly high cost, you need to sacrifice so much to it as well. So if someone doesn't know what a sacrifice is, they're just gonna have some vanilla true sun god and vanilla true sun god won't do anything. And also the problem is if you want to have a lot of range, um then it can't pop camera balloons video of true sun god versus a camera balloon. Please that's cringe. Um okay. But yeah, but when you do do it and pair it with like an ultra boost and a homeland defense and a palmer brew then it will kill anything except for camera red balloons unless you put it in the homeland defense radius Archmage I'll pop it at high C2 actually no I'll pop it at low B2 because so it's a decent tower it's actually it's a good tower I've used it to do bosses before it's good at soloing, it's, I like how it's a mix of like the different paths. It's got the shimmer of the bottom path and it's got the dragon path of the middle path. I use it for bosses, it's a good tower and it does a lot of damage. Bez. Balloon Exclusion Zone. Or known as the BAPZ. Is that the Balloon Exclusion Zone? I cannot remember. There's not much of a use for it basically. Like, it's good, but you could, uh, it's too expensive. Like, I mean, you could just go for bad spam, but I don't think that works anymore because of the math, but... It's not, there's so many better other options, it's just like, all of the S tier, A tier, and B tier you could probably use. MAD. I'll put that in the S tier. Not, uh, yeah, I might, I might move another one up to the S tier, uh, personally. Which one do I think most valuable going to the S tier? MAD, I suppose. MAD, it's an amazing tower for bosses, amazing tower for just Moab damage, incredible amount. Pair it with an Ultra Boost, it can do Blue Narius. Pair it without an Ultra Boost, it can do Glitch. It's far range, which means Vortex won't stun it. And you only need like one other tower to do dread balloon. And it's pretty and it's okayly affordable. But not you don't use it in gyms. Rad. We've got a rad here, or ray of doom. I'll put it in the highest speeder. It's expensive, but it can pretty much annihilate everything, and with its buff, you know it's a really good buff. That has made it do lots of damage to single target. It can actually solo like BADs and stuff now, which it couldn't before, so it's really good now. And I recommend you giving it a try.
Oh wait, what, I don't know what they're called. All I know is like one of them is like a megalodon, one of them is like a gigantosaurus, or a gigantosaurus, and one of them is like a. I don't know. Should I search up? No. Uh, okay, so top path beast handler. It could literally solo bosses, but with its nerf. I now uh, put it in high A tier. We need. To, I think we need to do. I think I need to do a bit more experiments, a bit more testing, and we just need to have the beast handler. Like once Ninja Kiwi find a place they are comfortable with the beast handler, then I can be sure what to say. But for now, I'll put that in the top A tier because it used to be able to do bosses really well. Like it's just solo everything, and it is still incredibly good. Like, don't get me wrong, it's an incredibly good tower, even though I haven't put it in the S tier. Gigantosaurus. I'll prop you in the A tier too because you are put in low A tier. Because it's a good tower, don't you mind? A great tower. <laughs> it can pretty much solo. But. And. I don't. Do I need to say that much more? It's an amazing tower. And I. But the problem is, it's really, really expensive. That's the problem about all of these. They're really, really expensive. But the work up to it, the T-Rex does do a quite good amount of damage. Bottom path. I'll put it in high beta, it's not my favourite one out of the three, but it is still quite a good tower and I recommend you giving it a try. Price is also a problem on this one too, like the other ones. But I, li I like it because it's quite a good tower. Okay, so I'll have a quick skim through, see if I want to change any one up. Like anyone needs to move down or moved up. No, I think I like my tier list the way it is. And if you disagree with anything tell me in the comments down below but thank you so much for watching the video i hope you did enjoy wait on the same and i'll see you guys again whenever i see so take a screenshot put it on a subreddit or something and see who agrees with it thanks for watching goodbye